Less than 1.3% of people in the US have a security clearance, but with one, you have access to a large pool of really high paying IT and cybersecurity jobs all around the world that most people cannot even apply to. So if job stability and high income is your thing and you're interested in getting a security clearance, definitely keep watching. I'm going to so today I'm gonna to cover what exactly a security clearance is. I'm gonna talk about the different levels of security clearance. We're gonna talk about the requirements you need to meet in order to get a security clearance. We're gonna look at a website to see where people were denied a clearance and reapplied to it, like appealed the deny case. And then we're gonna kind of look at that a little bit so you can get a sense of how you can actually go about getting one if you have like a, a bad past. We're gonna cover how to find jobs that will actually sponsor you for security clearance. So basically a security clearance is just like a, a stamp of approval on your person that allows you to work certain levels of jobs for either directly for the government or like a defense contract where there's sensitive information involved. And you can't just go out and buy a clearance or just ask for one or something like this. You have to actually be hired for a job that requires you to have a security clearance and then the company will sponsor the background check that's required for you to like actually obtain the clearance. And you can get a clearance through a bunch of different ways. You can join the military is probably like the most common well-known way, but there are companies that will sponsor you as a civilian for a security clearance as well. And once you have a clearance, then it makes you eligible to at least be considered to for and apply to all those like defense contracts and government jobs that most of the population like almost 99 percent of people have no chance of getting because they don't have a clearance so if you can get one it's really good to have so getting into the levels of security clearance there's basically three main levels with kind of like at the very top there's like a fourth designation within the very top level but basically there's three main levels the first level being confidential, second level being secret, and then the third level, like the top level being top secret. And these are kind of the implications of those different levels. You can kind of read them on the screen. And at the very top, you can get like a top secret with a sensitive compartmented information. This looks like TSSEI. People usually write it like this. And basically what this means is you have like the very top level of clearance, but you need to go through some kind of like extra scrutiny and extra investigation because the information that you're accessing is uh, super imperative to national security. It's really important to make sure, you know, it's like a need, need to know basis essentially. It's like really, really top secret. You can kind of think about it like that. And naturally kind of the higher you go in the pyramid, the more valuable your security clearance is, thus the more rare you are. And generally speaking, the higher your salary it will be for those type of job requiring a top secret with the SEI. Getting into the requirements that you need to have, at least to get a security clearance in the US, you have to be a US citizen. You can't be like a permanent resident or anything like this. I think there are some like really special cases where the government might give a resident some kind of security clearance or um, that might be wrong or they'll give an opportunity to fast track that individual into becoming a citizen, like depending on what the situation is, probably in times of war or something like this. But generally speaking, you have to be a citizen. Um, this is not for the clearance itself, but if you want to work in IT for jobs that require a clearance, there are certain technical requirements that you need to meet. If you look up uh, DOD 8570 and DOD 8140, it's usually going to be one of these certifications. So for example, if you have CISSP, you're, you're for the most part good to go from like a technical and information assurance management standpoint. Um, otherwise, usually you at least need CompTIA Security Plus um, to be eligible to work the jobs that will sponsor you for a clearance. So, um, definitely check out these practice questions. I have a whole bunch of practice questions for all of, like not all the CompTIAs, but like A+, plus, Network+, plus, Security+, plus, as well as CISSP. So if you're interested in getting a security clearance, check these out, they're absolutely free. In order to get a clearance, you need to have a good moral character, and this is kind of an ambiguous term, but generally speaking, um, you shouldn't have like felonies or anything like this, and you're not allowed to do like, I don't quote me on this, you should Google it, but like schedule one or schedule two drugs, like federally illegal substances, you're not supposed to be like actively doing them. But if you do have a record or you have done drugs in the past, you can still apply to the jobs that require, um, how can I say, that require clearance. But when you go through like that adjudication process, when they're doing a background check on you, you'll have to fill out this form called SF-86. It's a, a long, long form. That's what she said. And it will ask you stuff like, do you have like a record? Do you do drugs? Um, you just, you can't lie on that at all. Um, Cause if you do lie and say no, and then you have to do a poly, right? and you lie in the poly and you fail the poly, your, your whole thing will get like thrown out, right? So you, you should disclose all of that stuff and it's possible for you to, 
to get the clearance even if you have done drugs or whatever basically they're just trying to check if you are easy to be easy to be compromised like you know if the enemy gets a hold of you and they blackmail you like we're gonna tell the you know whatever that you did drugs or they try to buy you for example um, part of the moral character thing is if you have a, a large amount of bad debt that will often disqualify you from getting a clearance like if you've gone to collections and it's like unreasonable um, that's being the reason behind that is because you know again if the enemy like gets a hold of you they'll bribe you for like you know 50k to disclose national secrets something like this i think that's the government's reasoning behind it so you have to be of kind of good moral character and we're going to look at a website later of people who actually got denied a clearance and then how they appealed it and what the adjudicator or like the judge decided it at the end whether or not to grant them the clearance or continue to deny them. So basically, if you go to this website, I'll put a link to this in the description. Um, it's like the Defense Office of Hearings and Appeals, and specifically this is for industrial security clearance eligibility decisions. You can kind of click through these years and then look at different cases where maybe somebody was accused of doing something criminal, they got denied a clearance, they appealed it, and then they got the clearance you know, in the end, or they would continue to be denied for it. So for example, this one, you can, you can kind of read through this whole document here if you want, but basically it's like based on, in the end, it, they said like, based on the record evidence as a whole, I, I conclude that the applicant provided substantial evidence, blah, blah, blah. In the end, she met her ultimate burden of persuasion to show that it's clearly consistent with the national interest to grant her eligibility to access classified information. The case is decided for the applicant. So it sounds like, you know, this person, something bad happened to them. You can read through this um, document document if you want they appealed it and then in the end they got security clearance the last video i made about this a lot of people asking me like oh i'm a, I'm a felon like can i get a clearance uh, yeah you can but you know it just it just depends on the adjudicator and like the the court and all that stuff so um you're not disqualified just yeah keep that in mind so getting right into how to find jobs that will actually sponsor you for a security clearance um the easy well i shouldn't say the easiest way but a really straightforward way to do this is join the military but if you don't want to do that you can actually go to different job sites like linkedin danger zone jobs vectris which is an army contractor uh, clearance jobs or or Indeed. Indeed is probably the easiest one just to kind of see what I'm talking about. And then you can search things like, uh, in quotes, use quotes for this, uh, ability to obtain a security clearance, or again, quotes, ability to maintain a security clearance, or just ability to obtain or ability to maintain, and just search that. And those will bring out jobs with that say in the requirements, like ability to obtain a clearance, ability to maintain a clearance. This just means like you have to be, you know, all the requirements that we talked about before, you know, like you have to be a US citizen of good moral standing, um, et cetera, et cetera. The jobs that require you to have one ahead of time, they should say something like uh, yeah. security clearance required or required secret clearance or required top secret clearance. But um, that's if, you know, you already have one and, and that's if you already have one. But if you don't have one, you're trying to get sponsored, search these two terms, ability to maintain and ability to obtain. And obviously there's more sites than just, you know, Indeed and LinkedIn or whatever, these ones that I posted. Um, the way I got my security clearance was from a completely random site. So I might even recommend just using Google and searching, you know, ability to maintain a security clearance in Google with quotes and just seeing what job sites come out. Cause that's, that's almost what I did. It's basically what I did. And I found my job at like some random, random ass website so definitely do that also getting a clearance and finding someone to sponsor you is of course it's harder than finding a normal job right in my opinion anyway because there's, there's just like way less of them so what i would recommend doing is being super super flexible for your first job it, like as flexible as possible for me the job where i got my secu security clearance i was working in the u.s making 75k at the time and the job i got was in japan making 50k so i i moved across the world and took a fat pay cut so I could get a security clearance. Granted, I like Japan, so it wasn't that bad, but um, still like be be open to it. And there there are a lot of security, like jobs requiring clearance in the US, especially on the East Coast, like Washington DC. Uh, I don't wanna say obviously, but you know, a lot of uh, governmental presidential stuff like goes on over there, as well as Maryland. There's just like a whole bunch of clearance jobs over there. so. Just be open and willing to relocate, at least for, you know, getting that initial clearance until that clearance is fully adjudicated, like you fully have it. Then you can kind of start, you know, looking for jobs in more convenient places. And I will say it might be easier. Um, 
don't again this is not 100 facts this is just kind of a, an axiom i guess that i accept in my head um it's probably easier for you to go from secret clearance to top secret clearance than trying to find a job that will sponsor you for a top secret clearance i'm not i'm not certain that exists um, it may but um i would like if your goal is to get like a top secret with a you know sei like don't just like go for that i'm not sure if you can get that right away just search for jobs that re that will sponsor you for a secret clearance and then once you have like filled out that sf86 and your clearance got like fully adjudicated and you're inside of jpass like the system um you're like in there already it might be easier for you to like either change jobs or get promoted or something into a job that requires a top secret clearance because the whole process in like the file on you has already started and it's from a logistics and like paperwork standpoint i believe it's easier to go from secret to top secret so don't just like hold out for a top secret of course if you join the military you can just like get one right probably um you know if you're in good moral standing and like all of that but you, you might shoot for like a job that requires uh, or that will sponsor you for a secret clearance first. Don't forget to check out the free practice exams for the certifications. Almost, I will say probably all of the tech jobs that require a clearance or that will sponsor you for a clearance will require you to have certifications. This is the one instance where you're kind of like required to have like security plus or CSSP depending on what your job is. So um, for me, when I got my first job, I had a bunch of certs, but the ones that like really actually helped me get the job is I had CISSP and I had CCNA. Check out the free practice questions. I'm going to keep making more and more and they have, you know, answer explanations, really high quality. So I'll put a link for that in the description. Uh, but yeah, best of luck getting your clearance. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments or I said any kind of misinformation. I definitely didn't mean to. Uh, but yeah, we'll see you in the next video.